Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good, and what a beautiful weekend it has been. First, we send the English back to the caves. Now, the Catalan fans are also in the hiding, and it has been a thrilling week of football. We are firmly in for a double, and it's almost unbelievable how quickly things have changed. We still have one major hurdle to go past in a matter of days, but it's just amazing how Zidane and the players have come together to resurrect the season. Zidane has again turned things around, and when it came to the El Clasico, it's the experience that really came in handy for Real Madrid. We had seasoned campaigners, we had players who had been there, done it on the big nights, and most importantly, we had a team with a winning mentality. And yes, I'd agree that we came very close to dropping two points, but the fine margins worked in favour of Real Madrid, and they kept calm under the torrential rain. It was cold, it was chilly, we saw Leo Messi was shivering as he looked completely drenched in the rain, and he had to then go and change his shirt, so you can understand how tough it must have have been for the players. Their vision was impeded by such torrential rain, but we hung on, we weathered the storm of nature, we weathered the storm of Barcelona, and in the end, most importantly, we are top of the table, and we have retained the bragging rights. So in this video, we are going to do the post-match analysis of Real Madrid versus Barcelona. We are going to assess the performance of our players, so let's get started. Let's start by having a look at the lineup. We had the 4-3-3 formation, we had Coutinho in goal, we had the back four of Mendy, Nacho, Militao, and Vasquez. In the midfield, we had Cruz, Casemiro and Modric and in attack we had Benzema, Vinicius and Valverde. Before doing the analysis let's quickly do the shout out. A number of you got your predictions correct but I only have space for the two of you and today's lucky winners are Mr. William Cavallio and Mr. Davin. Anyways moving on we had spoken in the pre-match analysis that the involvement of Valverde was going to be very important in the match. Not only because of the Messi Alba connection but also it was a mechanism to ensure that Modric and Cruz had more help to do the defensive work which some subsequently prevented the two from completely burning out, and that was the approach that Zidane went with. I thought Valverde had a very flexible role, we could see him making those runs on the wings, at times he was helping out in the midfield, and at times he formed a part of the back five, as you can see in this picture. And that was very important to contain Barcelona on the right. He used to continuously help Lucas Vasquez, and he was constantly acting as a roadblock for Jordi Alba for most of the match. The only lapse was when Messi found Alba running into space, and then subsequently he delivered a cross, which was put in by Oscar Mingueta. But these things are bound to happen. Barcelona were also there to play. It's not like they were going to put up the white flag easily and simply accept defeat. But anyways, coming back to the role of Valverde, his multi-dimensional role reaped a lot of dividends for Madrid. His role in defense was important, but we also know he has the nag of making those darting runs into the opposition's half. For the goal, he burst forward with acres of space ahead of him. He finds Vasquez who was supporting an attack. Vasquez then passes the ball to Benzema. And that finish from Benzema, that was absolutely world class. The finish was one from the top draw and those are the kinds of goals that the Classico demands. The flick from Benzema left Ter Stegen scrambling and we took the early lead. But talking about how Zidane exploited the setup of Barcelona and here I'm going to primarily talk about the first half. We saw that Barcelona had set up in the 3-5-2 formation. This is a formation that has worked really well for Barcelona and Koeman stuck with that. But there is one problem with this formation and that is sometimes the wing backs can be very aggressive going forward. Forward. They focused too much on the attacking aspect of the game. Both Jordi Alba and Sergio Nierdest on either side were compelled to go forward much more as they had fallen behind very early. And due to this, the gap between the centre backs and the wing backs used to be too big sometimes. And that is where Vinicius particularly took advantage. After Real Madrid won the ball back, they were looking for Vinicius to exploit these spaces. And Vinicius, with his pacey runs, was making all kinds of trouble for Barcelona. I remember there was one instance where Mingueta and Vinicius were on a foot race. Mingueta had to run back and cover and the way he was running, it looked like he was running for his life. He wasn't even looking at Vinicius, he just wanted to cover the ground that he had lost. So that was another good performance from Vinicius, he's playing very well. The confidence is so high that Vinicius is making outside of the foot passes as we saw in the case where Valverde had hit the post which almost got us the third. And these two, Vinicius and Valverde, love playing Barcelona. In the El Clasicos that they have been involved in, they have had a strong showing, they have been impactful and only the sight of Vinicius leaving PK flawed was missing from that match. So yes, the first half was very convincing for Real Madrid. We had spoken that a central block to handle Messi would be very effective and every time Messi tried to do something with the ball, he found it almost impossible to breach the white wall that Real Madrid had set up. Casemiro was also a key player to keep Messi quiet. At times, he was shadow marking Messi. They were having that battle going on and although Casemiro did get a red at the end, but for majority of the match, he was able to stop Messi in his tracks. 
Now, what repercussions that red will have, that is a different question, but certainly the next match will be a big one for Real Madrid because we'll not only be without Casemiro, but we'll also be without Nacho. So that is a big issue. And will Varane be back in time? I do have my doubts regarding that. But maybe we'll see Mendy filling in with Marcelo as left back, or maybe Victor Chust will come in. And now if we talk about the second half, it was a crazy half of football. The rain certainly made things more interesting, but I think we all can agree Barcelona were the better team in that half. They were taking charge of proceedings, they were much more aggressive, and Zinedine Zidane then made the bold move of taking out Cruz and Benzema, that too in the 70th minute. Vinicius and Valverde were also taken off, and that was a very bold move by Zinedine Zidane. Taking all these players off could have been a risky proposition for Madrid, but Zidane didn't care about the opposition. He had the Liverpool game in mind, he knows he needs his dressing room heavyweights to deliver at Anfield, and he stuck to his plan of giving them some rest. The other thing that this move also showed is that Zidane has a lot of confidence, the unity that was lacking in the side in the early parts of the season, the cohesiveness which was lacking early on, it seems that the team has taken care of it and we can see the results on the pitch. Whomever Zidane is calling upon, they are responding to Zidane positively. You talk about Militao, you talk about Marcelo, you talk about Isco, all are coming off the bench and doing a decent job within the limited minutes. In the other games, we have seen Arribas and Marvin Park responding positively to Zidane as well. So that is an improvement we have seen. The Real Madrid side has really been tested this season and Zidane has really worked well with the limited players. And lastly, this game also showed what a master tactician Zidane can be. Yesterday, we set up in the 4-3-3. Before that, in La Liga, we had set up in the 3-5-2. And before that, we had played with the 4-4-2 formation. Zidane has really been flexible with his tactics, adapting to the problems that lie ahead of the team. And here, Zidane outplayed the tactics of Koeman. He played to the strength of the players, and when the tide was against us, he ensured that the players set up in the right formation. The team is not about individual brilliance anymore, but it is more about each and every player having a very good understanding of the role that Zidane is asking them to play. And as a collective, we are playing much better. Now, obviously, you would be needing the touch of class from the likes of Cruz, Modric, Benzema, but I like how the chemistry of the side has grown in the past two months, and that has placed us in a position to start thinking about the double again. We were down in the ditches, there were calls of people asking Zidane to move on, and from there to this point, we have come a long way, and Mr. Zinedine Zidane, he deserves massive respect for what he has done. Now, we still haven't won anything yet, so we have to stay humble. We are in a good position in both La Liga and the Champions League, but the work is far from over. The Liverpool game will be the third big match in the row, and we have to show character. We have to show composure, we have to show patience, and we have to be professional. The match can easily derail all the progress we have made so far. So we move on from here, and we set our sights on the next big match. A big challenge awaits us, and we will be doing more analysis as the match approaches near. So those are my thoughts from the match, and let's conclude this video by hearing what Zidane had to say in his post-match press conference. Assessing the match, he said, it was a complicated match, we controlled the game and deserved to win. We had chances to get a third or even a fourth goal, we struggled at times because this game demanded an awful lot of us, just like the clash against Liverpool, but that's what you come to expect against these teams. It was a well-deserved Real Madrid win. Then Zidane was asked for his thoughts on the La Liga title race. He said, we are at the limit physically, it was a tremendous match today and that's football and it's what we have to deal with now. But it feels better when you end up with three points. We are not going to change anything, we have to keep going because we've won nothing yet. It's one game, three points and nothing has changed. We are in the fight like the rest of the teams. We may have tough spells but we have to be fearless and we have to believe in the work that we are doing. Then Zidane was specifically asked about the performance of Nacho but Zidane took the opportunity to praise the entire squad as he said, Nacho isn't just doing well now, he has been here for a long time and has always been ready to play when he had to, just like the other players. I am happy for them, what we are doing is very difficult. I think Odriozola, Marcelo, Mariano and Isco all came on and did well and we will need them. We need all our players and they are all committed. So those are the thoughts from Zinedine Zidane and now it's your time to let me know what you thought about the performance of our players. What do you have to say about the major talking points from the match? Write in the comments below. I will see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.